and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. I speak with you in the name of God, the Father and Mother of us all. Amen. Everybody, wherever you are, take a big, deep breath. Now let it out. You are my family in Christ, and I love you. We are bound together, whether we worship on site at the church's property or separately via the internet. We are bound by the unifying power of the Holy Spirit. As a colleague mentioned this week, it is the Spirit that builds the church, not a building. The way the Holy Spirit connects us is a lot like the way music connects people. See, there is a kinship between music and the Holy Spirit. We know that music involves sound, and sound is simply vibrating air, excited breath. The language of Scripture, the languages of Scripture use the same word for breath and for spirit. In Hebrew, it is ruach. And in Greek, it is pneuma. In both cases, breath and spirit are interchangeable. Music is related to the spirit because musicians excite the breath to vibrate the air and make the sounds and silences that form music. Not just wind instruments and singers either. String orchestras breathe together in order to play together. When we breathe in concert, we are bound together. And our power to create is exponentially increased. About a decade ago, Eric Clapton and Wynton Marsalis did a concert together at Jazz at Lincoln Center, the premier jazz venue in New York City. On the DVD of the concert, in between songs, Wynton talks about their collaboration and the way music, especially jazz, can unite us. He describes a jazz ensemble's performance as a reversal of the Tower of Babel. Y'all remember that story from the Old Testament, where the people had gotten so arrogant at their technological advancement that they thought they could build a tower to the heavens. Now God looked down upon the trifle of a tower and the humans so impressed with themselves. And what happens next is kind of like God turning to an angel and saying, here, hold my beer. God confuses the people by creating different languages so they couldn't understand each other and couldn't work together. Winton says jazz reverses this frustrated communication. Through the medium of music and the language of jazz, the performers and the audience are unified, speaking and hearing at a level far deeper than mere words can communicate. Whether Marsalis was conscious of it or not, he was speaking of the work of the Holy Spirit. Today is the day of Pentecost, the day we remember, the day we celebrate, that glimpse of the great united family we hear about in Acts, the day the apostles burst from their confinement, their quarantine, proclaiming the risen Jesus. The story goes that whatever they said, the people heard it in their native language. See, so the apostles were speaking in tongues, languages, and accents beyond their background and experience. However, over the years, the speaking part has been overemphasized. The people hear differently in the story as well. The Holy Spirit transforms not only speech, but our capacity for listening, our ability to hear each other on a level deeper than mere words. As Professor Luke Powery writes, the genuine way of the Spirit is the way of unity. Now, we should not confuse unity with uniformity. In high school, my band director always emphasized the importance of our band uniforms. Not only were they expensive, they also represented the institution. Our uniformity signaled the band's identity, the institutional identity, not our human identity identity. Now, I have a tremendous love of marching bands, but a marching band is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not uniform. The kingdom of God is diverse. As a colleague reminded me this week, God does not speak one language, or that God speaks many languages and accents. 
some ancient and forgotten, yet still of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is a spirit-formed, unified diversity. As St. Paul writes to the church in Corinth, there are diverse gifts and services and activities in the kingdom, yet they all emanate from the one spirit, Lord God. In the reading from Acts, people of many races are unified by the power of the Spirit to transform. The Spirit does not make them all the same, though. The Parthians do not have to become Medes, and the Elamites do not have to become residents of Mesopotamia. The Spirit transforms their speaking and their hearing. Acknowledging different languages and celebrating diverse accents, the Spirit unifies a community shapes an ecclesial unit, indeed builds a church that mere words cannot portray. It is a unity formed in breath, indeed the very breath of God. In the story from John's Gospel, the risen Jesus enters the locked upper room, hearkening back to the breath of life of the creation story. Jesus breathes on the apostles, infusing not just their lungs, but their very being with the Spirit. Jesus says, my peace I bring to you, my peace I leave with you. The very spirit that transforms our speech and unifies our listening brings us peace. Speech, word, and breath. I cannot utter those words this week without hearing the cries of our African-American brothers and sisters. I cannot utter those words this week without recognizing that we are not at peace because we are have celebrated division instead of diversity. We have sought privilege instead of equality, and we have failed to listen, failed to let the Spirit transform our listening, failed to hear the cries of people of color, cries for breath, cries for life. Speech, word, breath. I also can't utter these words today without thinking of Marlene and Michelle. Marlene sang in the choir and was the bookkeeper at my last congregation. She had been involved for a long, long time at the church, long before I got there. And it was a long, long time after I got there that we were able to pray her partner, Michelle, into the church. As a lesbian, Michelle had been hurt way too often and injured way too deeply by the church. She would come on Christmas and Easter but the pain was not easy to overcome. Eventually, after years of Marlene's fervent prayers, Michelle started coming regularly. She even joined the choir. Finally, in 2016, at the age of 50, on Easter Sunday morning, I baptized Michelle into Christ's body, the church, just as we will do with the infant Charles Henry Williamson later today. In the summer of that same year, I got the honor of performing Marlene and Michelle's wedding, it was the first same-sex wedding I did. It's also the first interracial marriage, for Marlene was white and Michelle is black. A year later, in 2017, about the same time I started interviewing with Nativity, Marlene was diagnosed with a brain tumor. They did surgery about the time Jody and I came here for the face-to-face -face interview. The surgeon was clear and specific. The surgery and aggressive radiation and chemo treatments would only buy Marlene three years. Well, it's been almost exactly three years. Jody and, I got, Jody and I got the call this week that Marlene has entered hospice. We grieve alongside Michelle because we are bound by the Holy Spirit in Christ's body, the church. We grieve alongside Michelle because we love her and Marlene. We grieve alongside Michelle because the Holy Spirit has transformed our speaking and hearing into something mere words cannot describe. Marlene and Michelle's wedding is second only to my own as the funnest wedding ever. It was a vision of Pentecost. White folks, black folks, brown folks, gay folks, and straight folks bound by love and celebrating the glorious and diverse family of God. We need more glimpses of the kingdom like that. Speech, word, and breath. I can't say those words today without acknowledging that we need the Holy Spirit to keep working. 
We need the Holy Spirit to keep transforming our listening, to keep changing us so that we can have ears to hear the cries of communities of color, the cries for breath, the cries for peace, the cries for life. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. We need you even more. Amen.